golf question, but I kind of want to know about football. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, where are y'all at, Matt? Uh, you know, after math, trying to move on to Tampa Bay here, on, you know, the whole team as, as a captain. I'm sure you got a pulse of the whole whole team. I think, guys, you know, obviously we didn't start out the way we wanted to um, and get the result we wanted to in game one, but it's a long haul. And so I think the attitude's been good. You know, me good meetings this morning, uh, good stuff on Monday of getting back in, guys getting in the weight room, getting out onto the field uh, and, and being detailed in the meetings. I think it's exactly what you want from guys. Now, we've got to stack on that the rest of the week. We've got to have a really good week of preparation. We're playing a really good football team. Um, you know, so it's going to require our best. But, you know, I think the start to the week has been good. In the defense, Tampa Bay, a lot has been made about the interior of it. Uh, you know, they've had some problems in the secondary, but they also seem stout on the edges. Uh, what's your assessment of them? Yeah, I think they're, they're really good uh, front seven. You know, a defensive line, um, you know, that's, that's strong on the inside. They've got talented edge rushers, uh, good edge setters in the run game. Uh, two athletic linebackers, guys we've played against a lot um, in the past. We know how talented and how good of players they are. And, um, you know, they've, they've had some injuries in the secondary, but um, they're guys we have gone against and, and know what they're capable of as well. So, um, you know, I think it's a defense that's playing with a lot of confidence, and uh, it's going to require us to go down there and play really well. Josh? After a uh, game like that and with so many kind of young guys who are heavily in involved here. Do you, do you find that during this practice week, do you have to be more vocal or maybe on top of people more? Like, does your role as a leader change in a situation like this? I think you adjust every week. You know, you, you, you've got to you get a pulse for, for what's going on and what certain guys need. And so, um, you know, I feel like I've, I've got a, a good feel for our guys. I think, you know, when I look back at the last game and what we need to do moving forward, I think it comes down to detail, you know, of, of Staying disciplined uh, in what we're coached to do, and um, you know, just go on out there and execute in the way that we're capable of. Because when we do, I think we're capable of of moving the ball efficiently, and uh, that's what we're going to harp on this week. And that's what I'm going to harp on is the detail and making sure that um, we're as disciplined and detailed as possible. What, what type of reaction have you seen from your offensive line, especially the, those younger guys who who are on the who are on the inside? What kind of a response have you seen? I think, you know, they do exactly what you would want them to do. Come back in, you know, watch from it or watch it and learn from it uh, and get back to work. You know, I think all those guys have a lot of pride, personal pride and uh, professional pride in, in what they do. And, um, you know, for some of these young guys, it's their first real opportunity, you know, to have a full game evaluation and uh, learn from that and, and uh, make the adjustments. And, um, you know, I think it's going to be good for them. I think you can learn a lot early in the season. You know, I remember myself just from week to week uh, as a young player making huge strides. When you, you face Tony Tumper and you thought time, you haven't beaten him yet, even though you're not actually on the field physically against him, when you're facing a quarterback and you have not beaten him, does that ever get in your head? Does that ever – does that play mind games with, with the quarterback when that happens? Not really. I think that um, – you know, I think you focus on, on the guys you're going against. I've played against a lot of great quarterbacks uh, during my career, and you know that they're always going to give their team an opportunity uh, on the other side, you know, regardless of how the game shakes out. Going against Drew Brees for, uh, you know, 13 straight years in division, you know that's how it's going to be. And uh, Tom's the same kind of player. Um, regardless of how games shake out, he's mentally tough, does a great job of, of staying in the present and, and operating, you know, at a high level. And so you know you have to be – you know, at that same level on your side, but it's, it's about their defense. You know, uh, the defense they're playing with creates a lot of issues for us, and uh, we've got to find ways to, to attack it. You know, the public usually, media included, they usually makes the quarterback against quarterback. Is that? Do you think that should happen? <coughs> I mean, or is that kind of just? Listen, I, I, I'm not naive. I understand the nature of, of our sport and uh, the popularity of that position and, and the emphasis that that's put on it. Um, you know, but you, you, you can't worry about what he's doing. You know, you have, to, you have to focus on what you're doing and going out there and, you know, executing um, the way that, that we're capable of and the way that I'm capable of. Josh? Obviously, it's early in Arthur's career here, but how does his approach in dealing with kind of the week-to-week -week ups and downs compare to other guys you've played for? 
I mean, every coach is different. I think all, you know, I, I've been lucky. All three coaches that I've played for in their own ways uh, were extremely consistent. And it doesn't mean they're the same, but they're, they're very consistent to who they are. Uh, and, you know, I think that's, you know, as a player, it's, it's nice when you have that. You know, there, there's um, a level of dependability and consistency that you show up to every day in the building uh, and you know what's expected from you. Um, and I think Art has done a great job of that, you know, not only this past week, but through training camp. I mean, there's, there's lots of different things that come up, and he's, you know, he's been really good with that so far. Allison? What kind of challenges does it present when you're going up against a division opponent, defending Super Bowl champ, just second week in this season when you are kind of going through these growing pains right now? I mean, it's one week, you know, uh, and so, you know, there, there's things that, that you can improve, you know, from. Uh, you know, every, every game on your schedule is tough. Um, and, you know, what they did last year is incredibly impressive, and they're talented, and they're a good football team. But every year is different. And so, um, you know, I think you just take it week by week. You know, you don't look any further into who they are or whatever. They're 1-0, and, and, and they're in our division, and they're playing well. And so, um, we got a lot of respect for him. There's no question about that. I, I've played a, a lot of football against these guys on the defensive side of the ball, so I know that um, you know they're very good. And, and my message to, to our team is, we need to be very good. We can be, and um, you know, let's focus on that. When you are getting sacked so many times during a game, and kind of going off of his question, are you individually talking to certain guys on the O line, saying like, hey, you know, let's do this, or is it? Are you looking at yourself, seeing what I could have done? Is it a little bit of both? What does this week kind of look like for you? Yeah, I think you know it's 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 a combination of everything. You're looking at at what they're doing uh, and making sure we're right in the calls that we're making, making sure everything's um, giving you the best opportunity to be successful pre-snap, uh, and then you encourage guys, come on, you know, like settle down. It's, it's just kind of get into the game, those kind of things, and and then you know you got to look at ways to get the ball out. You know, and, and find, you know, ways to get it out quicker sometimes or, uh, you know, be better with your movement in the pocket. I and mean, those are things, you know, I look at every week. Matt, obviously this is a new season, but last season in one of the games, you were up against the Buccaneers and they made a late run. Just going into this year, uh, what lessons have you learned and told your guys if you're in the position to finish the importance of finishing games? Well, the lesson is, is very important, you know, to, to finish them uh, when you get your opportunities. And so, you know, I, I don't think there's any mystery to it. You, you have to be on your details. You have to be disciplined. And you got to make the plays when they present themselves. Um, you know, we know going against this team that, that they compete, you know, for four quarters. And, and, you know, they've found ways to climb back into games and, and find ways to win. Um, you know, so if you're in those positions where you're ahead, you got to find ways to close it out. And, and I think we'll do that. You know, I really do. I've got, I've got belief in the guys that we have in our building uh, that, that we're going to get this thing right. And the glory, a lot of been made because you played Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, 328 Joes. I know you hear about it all the time. I don't, um, I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, is there any added pressure, of um, course, from that? Because Falcons fans want that win against Brady, of course. Uh, listen, I, of course we want to win this week, but it's not going to make up for that. Like, you know, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things. It's it's a part of your past. It's part of what happened. Um, you know, but it's got no bearing on this week. Matt, uh, kind of talking about you know protection and making sure guys are in place. I know one of the things that you know that was Alex Mack really good at was making sure he you know had. Been, um, making sure that, that y'all were there with it, the whole line was in the right protection. Is that something that you had to take over this year with Matt Hennessy, or is it kind of like Hennessy makes a call and you kind of make sure that, that the way y'all need to be? No, it's a combination of both. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, they, they typically we start with a base call, and uh, if we're getting out of that, it's, it's an opportunity for the quarterback to put us in the right protection. And as far as uh, Todd Bowles, like what are some of the traits in your film studies that you've seen that – let you know that, okay, I need to be on, on lookout for these type of things? Well, you know, he's, he's, he's been really good for a long time. I played him in a number of different spots, whether it goes back to Arizona or the Jets or here in Tampa. Um, 
he, he's got a really good feel for the game, you know, of when to dial up certain pressures, you know, when to play coverage. Um, you know they're going to give you a number of different looks, and you got to be prepared for something that you haven't, you know, planned for, you haven't seen up until this point. Uh, I have a ton of respect for him. And um, I think the biggest thing, though, when you go against, you know, a coach like Todd who's, who's had so much success is that, you know, you have to know where to get the ball out. You have to be sound uh, in your protection rules, and, and you got to trust your keys because there's going to be, you know, different people coming in different spots. Um, but if we're keyed in and we're, our, you know, across the board, our eyes are in the right spot, um, you know, we, we can get the job done. At this, at this point in your career, is it more any more frustrating to start the season in the way that, that the team started it with a loss that, that I mean, it's one game, you know. It's, uh, I think, you know, they all count one. And, and I remember Bill Musgrave telling me that after my second game in the NFL, he was our quarterback coach. And we got our, you know, we went down, it was a tough loss. And we had won the first week. And he said, listen, man, they all count one. And so you put it away, you learn from it, and you move forward. And so uh, it's disappointing because, you know, you'd like to start fast. You'd like to come out and play your best right away. Um, but the good teams I've been on, you know, uh, are the ones that got better as the year went on and improved. And uh, I think that's what we have to focus on, you know, improvement, daily improvement, and trying to, you know, find a way to be better this week and get a win. Yeah, I know you say, you know, it's one game, but do the thoughts creep in your mind at all? And, like, and how, if they do, how do you – Get, get rid of them and thinking like, you know, how many, how many more opportunities do I have? And if we're starting this way, like, where, where are we going? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't think of it like that. The guy we're playing against this week is 44, you know? And so, you know, I, I feel pretty good. <laughs> you were talking about being able to move the ball efficiently earlier in the game. When you go back and you look at the film, those first two drives specifically, what did you see that made you feel like, okay, this offense really does have something that we could well, I think, you know, you watch how we ran the football uh, early in the game and, you know, the, the effort and the intensity that our backs played with. I think that's something you can hang your hat on. Both those guys, I thought, ran the football really hard. Um, I, th I think those drives, we were really efficient on first down. And, you know, we're getting into looks. We're second and five and less. We're making first downs on first down. Uh, when we can do that, I think, you know, it makes it extremely difficult on a defense to defend everything. And so, you know, it's important for us to, you know, to, to, to play like that. But, you know, when we don't, we've got to be better on third down. You know, we, we have to find ways to convert on some of those third downs to get into drives a little bit better. So I'm excited about that. I think we can improve in that third down area. And I thought the third downs we converted in those first two drives really kept us going. On someone like Jake Matthews, who has more experience on this line, to kind of help the other guys up front. Yeah, for sure. You know, Jake. Jake's uh, such a good influence, not only on just our line, but the whole team. The way he works, how consistent he is day to day, um, the effort that he puts into it, the the level of detail, you know, and the way that he practices. Um, those are all great lessons for guys to to learn from. Blaine. Okay, see you later. Good question for you. I noticed the other day that Arthur came over a lot of times and was talking to you on the bench. You've been here as long as I've been here. You've had two defensive coaches, as head coaches. Is that immediate interaction really good? Something you've really not had much with Coach Smith and you know with Coach Quinn, for example. Yeah, it's different because it's the head coach, but the the interaction to play caller has has kind of always been that way. You know, whether it's from upstairs or whether it was with guys on the bench. And so, um, you know, that part of it's similar. It's just different in that. He's got some other responsibilities, you know, as well as just, you know, calling up the plays. So I thought the communication was really good. I thought we were efficient in how we operate it. And he did a great job of communicating. Yeah, um, Matt, I know where are you and Kyle at? Y'all talked, you know, um, I'm sure y'all talked after the game and so forth. Where, where is he at? Where is his head at? And uh, what y'all can do moving forward? I mean, that seam route looked pretty good. Yeah, I mean, you'll have to ask him where his head's at. But, you know, I thought he did a good job. Uh, I thought there were positives to take away from week one. I think, you know, it's always, you know, there's a lot that comes with it the first time doing it. And so it's particularly at the tight end position. You know, there, there's, there's a lot asked of, of that position to be heavily involved in the pass game, to be heavily involved in the run game, to be used in pass protection from time to time. Um, it's a lot of learning. And uh, I think he's done a great job with it. I thought he had a productive first game for us. And, 
you know, he just needs to, you know, continue to grow each week, which I think he'll do. Michael, yeah, I, got, I got two for you really quick pieces. I want to follow up when you're joking about Tom being 44. I mean, could you see yourself playing at 44? Is that something you would want to even do? Man, I would love to if, I, you know, as healthy as, as he is and as good as he's playing right now, I think that's great motivation for all of us. But I've said it before, you know, I, I'd like to play as long as I can if I feel good. But you never know. I mean, you never know what's in front of you. You never know how things can change. But, you know, right now I feel really good. Go back to something you were talking about a little bit earlier. When, when you all have a loss like you did in the opener, how critical is it for players to see Arthur maybe not panic, not start changing things left and right? Like, is there value in that for players to see the head coach kind of staying level? Yeah, for sure. You know, it shows uh, the strength of their belief in what they're doing. Um, and, and I think guys – you know, the buy-in's been strong uh, to what he's asked us to do, and I think it'll continue to be that way because his belief in, in what he's asking of us, what he asks of the staff, and, you know, what he believes in is, is really strong. And that comes, you know, it comes, a, comes across when, you know, you go through different periods throughout the season, you know, highs or lows. I think that consistency and belief in what you're doing is huge. Um, you talked about, of course, Kyle Pitts and playing with him. You think he did a good job. But you've also been able to play with some other great tight ends as quarterback. Um, what do you see for Pitts' potential, even though it's literally just one game it's early? What do you see his potential? I, I mean, he's talented. He's incredibly talented. And, um, you know, he works hard. I, I think I've, you know, said this at different points, you know, leading up until this point. Uh, the thing that encourages me the most is, you know, how consistent he is day to day. And, you know, the, the really good players that I've been around have been the ones that uh, consistently put in the work, had a great routine, knew exactly, you know, what their purpose was. And uh, he's got all those things which give him, you know, the ability, which give you a chance uh, to, to tap into that potential. But uh, I've been impressed with him so far. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks,